Welcome to the Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024, live from Paris, France. Join hosts Savannah Peterson, Dustin Kirkland, and Rob Strache as they interview some of the brightest minds in cloud native computing. Coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con is brought to you by Red Hat, CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. The Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024 begins right now. Hello and welcome to KubeCon Cloud Native Con EU in Paris on the Cube. We're going to have wall-to-wall -wall coverage this week, bringing you all of the things that you need to know about cloud native applications and how they're really changing. Today, I'm joined by Dustin Kirkland, who's going to help me break down the keynote that just got out a few minutes ago. Welcome. Ah, bonjour, mon ami Rob. Uh, oui, Comment oui. ça va? Uh, ah, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's about the extent of my uh, French Très bien. Well. Yeah, there we go. Bien. Yeah. Yes, but uh, well, I, I think it's great to be on with you again. I know you have a lot of background here. Again, love being here. You know, really bring the developer perspective, the engineering perspective to this, and it's going to be a great week. And I think there's a lot going on. Uh, let's kind of break down some of the stuff that was going on this morning and yesterday in the day zero events, yep. where we had a whole number of things from Red Hat Commons to uh, Backstage Day and Observer Observability Day and a whole number of other different things going on, plus the keynotes today, which really AI was front and center. Yeah, I mean, just start with the size of this place. I don't think I've seen the, the, the total numbers yet, but I mean, this Expo Hall, we're in Expo Hall 7 of, I don't know how many there are, eight or nine here in Paris, the lines for you know, badge check-in, security. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of people here, Rob. I yeah. mean, it's a tremendous conference. I think they were saying it was over 12,000, wow. the largest KubeCon so far. In uh, Europe or in, in, in total? In total. Wow, In okay. total, so I think Amsterdam was somewhere around 10 okay. is where they capped it. So being over 12, I think they were expecting to be somewhere between 12 and 15,000. It shows, I mean, yeah. energy is, is palpable for yes. sure. It is, it is, and so let's, let's jump in. I, I think what, what was really interesting yesterday and today was there was a lot of different sessions on AI, no matter if you were in the AI, you know, Kubernetes AI, cloud native AI, yep. things like Kubeflo or what have you but everything talked about AI. For sure. And this, this morning's keynote was no different from that perspective. What really stood out to you from the keynote this morning? Well, yes, AI uh, certainly was the open, the middle, and the close. Uh, every segment of the keynote, well orchestrated, but every segment of, of the keynote all about uh, AI ML and really about what I think uh, the, the CNCF is, is trying to do here is ensure that the cloud native Computing Foundation, Kubernetes, and that family of applications really are the home for uh, AI ML, you know, training, inferencing, fine tuning, all the different uh, types of workloads that you know, need to run at this point. Yeah, I, I think that was one of the keys that I heard, uh, and even back to yesterday when I went to Observability Day and I had been at the Red Hat Commons, there was a lot of talk about how the Kubernetes infrastructure needs to really evolve to take on model serving, to take yep. on resource allocation. I yep. think that was a big theme this DRA, morning. Yeah, DRA, a dynamic resource allocation, yeah. uh, saw a major upgrade in Kubernetes 1.30, uh, uh, 1.30. Um, and I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, NVIDIA had a keynote uh, this morning where they talked about a couple of different ways to drive better uh, GPU utilization sharing. They showed four different uh, ways of sharing GPUs and that, in fact, those can be layered on top of one another. Um, and I think, you know, one of, the, uh, one of the sort of paradoxes here is that there's both this uh, worldwide GPU shortage. I mean, you can see that just in the, the prices of GPUs, either new or, or used if you're buying them, uh, you know, slightly used. Uh, there's this, this shortage of hardware, in part created by some supply chain issues. Uh, but at the same time, there's also underutilized uh, GPUs in clouds, we hear that from CERN also right. this morning in the keynote. Yeah, and I thought what was interesting from CERN, and uh, just building off of what he was saying, is that CERN was very involved in previous open source groups and around resource allocation, all the way back to what was 
the global grid form, the open grid form, and then open stack. And it's, there is prior art there to yep. be able to do this. Yep. I think what was interesting was a lot of the discussion was not about how you train foundation models. It was about how you deploy these foundation models for inference yep. and how you fine tune them. And there was a lot of talk uh, about uh, you know, actual ARM-based processors and running inference on ARM-based processors. Uh, there was, Oracle made an announcement the last KubeCon that they were actually going to provide $3 million a year in free yep. uh, to the projects so that they can go out and do this. I think that we're going to see a lot around this. One of the interesting pieces also that was a thread through yesterday uh, in the data on Kubernetes or DOC, uh, went to that, that session as yep. well, was that it's around how do you actually get the data to the models or the models to the data, mm. and there's a lot of what's going to happen out at the edge. Right. And I, I think that was a really interesting dichotomy was, hey, containers have been great, we've been tr talking about are they you know, persistent or non-persistent data, and there was a lot of discussion about how you do persistency with like Postgres and sure. SQL and stuff. But what are you seeing as you look out and see that People are just interested in AI, but there's a whole lot of pieces that go along with that. Yeah, I, I don't. I actually don't think we heard all that much about the edge actually in that keynote here today. Um, that's something that I hope we hear a lot more about. Looking at the guest list we have coming on the cube this week, uh, I think there should be some interesting discussions there. Um, I uh, I would be very interested in, in some of the tr talk tracks as well around edge. You're spot on. I mean, the amount of data that it takes to train a model, um, moving that across networks is just it's in, it's in, it's unrealistic. It's infeasible, and so uh, just driving some of that actual training GPU CPU compute as close as possible to the actual data that it needs to consume. It's an, it's, a, it's an important problem that I think we need to hear a lot more about. Yeah, and I, I think it's, it's a very interesting task at hand for the CNCF with the fact that they keep bringing in different groups and keep on having more in Sandbox as of, I, I think it was as of March, there was 113 in Sandbox. Yeah. There's, 37 in incubating, yep. there's 26 in graduated, and... Is that total projects, or yes. are those AI-related pro projects? Those are, well, they all have AI now yes. in their name, I'm sure, but yep. to get people in. But when you start to look at the 113 sandbox, some of those are already being used in production yep. by companies out there, or there are commercial applications being built out. Sure. And I think one of the interesting things is there was a uh, whole track yesterday for startups yep. and about how to build a business on top of open source and how to do it in a way that doesn't you know, violate some of the agreements with the CNCF. Yep. What, are, what are you seeing from organizations out there? Do you see a lot more people trying to figure those models out? Yeah, for sure. I mean, things have come a long way. Uh, the first startup I was associated with, uh, we were trying to raise money in uh, 2009, 10, 11, uh, build around an open source encrypted file system uh, that I'd co-authored and co-maintained. Uh, the VC pitches in that time frame, you know, 09, uh, 10, and 11, we were explaining open source to the VCs themselves and uh, many of the VCs ran the other way. Um, we've come a long way in the last 15 years now and open source is, it's table stakes for, for, for most, uh, most startups, you know, talking to, to VCs. They do want to see a business model, obviously, but there's some tried and true ones at this point. Um, I did find it notable, um, I heard it, I counted at least three times in the keynote this morning uh, specifically Apache 2 and MIT licenses were mentioned. Uh, I don't know if it was a nudge or an encouragement, but you know, Priyanka and it, it seems like CNCF is certainly you know, pushing for, asking for uh, Apache and, and MIT licensed software. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, a, it's a little different than the GPL that drove Linux. There's a lot of com comparisons between Linux, the kernel, Linux, the OS, and, and Kubernetes. Um, so, but you know, I think in, in part, the business models surrounding Apache and MIT licensed software are a little better understood uh, and maybe a little more tried and true at, at this point. Then. Yeah, I, I think we're seeing it and I did some briefings before we got here and there was a lot about, hey, this part of it's Apache 2, yep. 
this is GPL or it's a custom license yep. and how they're trying to actually create business value around the Apache 2 software, the yep. MIT license software, which is I think the right way to go about doing it. People like DBT Labs have done that for years and I think they actually have figured out a pretty successful model around that and said that hey, you know, we're not going that direction. I think what will be interesting is, is that there was a half day open tofu day yesterday. <laughs> open tofu, yep. if, for those who don't know, is once uh, HashiCorp changed their license, really this for was- For Terraform. For Terraform. Yep. Uh, this really exploded. And I think what was interesting coming into this was there's now rumors on the street that Hashi may be for sale hmm. uh, as a public company. So we'll have to stay tuned to that this week because I'm, I'm trying to understand you know, what could happen if somebody bigger bought them yep. and actually went and changed the licenses back or did something with it that made it a more uh, agreeable open source license versus uh, where they went. So I think it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, for sure. And I would say also one of the big things is uh, right now some of the crew, uh, Dave and John, are out at GTC <laughs> in uh, San Jose. That's right. Uh, meeting with Jensen and talking. You think they're talking to AI right I, now? I, I think they might be. Okay. I think they were, they were talking about George Lucas being there and a whole number of others that I saw A-listers coming out. So AI has like jumped the shark when you have you know, George Lucas going, and uh, I can't remember if it was Exhibit or one of the other rappers going to the actual keynote for Jensen. Wow. In, uh, it just, it's crazy, but I think what I expect for the rest of the week is that we'll get a heavy dose of AI throughout and interweave through all of the different discussions that we have here, which I think will be great. I also think that you know, it's 10 years of Kubernetes coming up. We're yep. coming up on the, you know, the anniversary. Do you, do you think most of the major things at the Kubernetes level are solved for, and it's really about cloud native? Um, yes and no. I, I think there was that question was posed to uh, Clayton in the in the keynote as well. You know what's left to be done, and he said what's not left to be done. I mean, there's still plenty plenty of work. Um, the monitoring and observability um, still leaves a little bit to be desired. It's a uh, it's a complicated ecosystem of ways. Uh, you know, other things you have to plug into Kubernetes to to get the logging and metrics and observability that you ultimately need, especially when now you're talking about these AI ML you know, workloads that, that, are, that are finding their way deep into the heart of Kubernetes, the scheduler, the resource allocation, and so forth. Uh, there's, there's a lot still left to do there. You know? um, so I, I think that's one key piece that, that we still have a ways to go, Rob. I, I think so, and I, I think that's a place where we're going to we're definitely dive deep with a number of the different companies that are part of that ecosystem. Yep. Uh, I think another one that's going to be interesting to see is really that uh, service mesh oh, and yeah. Istio and what's gone on there. Connectivity, yeah, absolutely. Connectivity and networking, because I think it's still tough, and I, I think it's still uh, overly complicated to actually have a mesh of applications talking to each other, and uh, I think that organizations are looking to have that simplified, and I think a lot of that's going to be what we see over the coming years, is like how do we get some of these other things that, okay, yes, maybe the containers and the format and how they get deployed is kind of solved for, yeah. but actually the cloud native aspects, and observability is definitely one of the ones that I, I that and the networking and all of these meshes. Security too, I, I mean, oh, you yeah. know, just the, the, the security requirements in an enterprise, you know, however they're leveraging, first, the Kubernetes pieces, second, the rest of the cloud native ecosystem, and then third, trying to take on this whole new world of, you know, AI uh, enablement of, of, that, of, yeah. that, of that app. And we'll actually have the GM from OpenSSF oh, on cool. uh, tomorrow, and we'll actually have also Melinda Marks, who's the director uh, practice director for security over at Enterprise Strategy Group on with us to kind of wrap on that stuff as well tomorrow sure. afternoon. So I, I think you're right dead on that this is going to be a lot going on and we have a lot of different and interesting things that we can uh, dig into. So, uh, you know, thank you for coming on board. And, Absolutely, you know, looking we'll, forward to it. This is going to be an awesome time. And thank you for joining us here at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, EU in Paris on the Cube, the leader in high-tech analysis and news. Keep it tuned here, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.